Hi, Vinyl Community. Anyone else out there? Martin here. Um, Richard McCook did a thread, and I'd like to respond to it. It was uh, some um, 90s um, albums, sort of on a theme from his uh, Isle of... Uh, or Island of Vinylia, I thought, what would happen if I went back to the 1990s? What would I remember? So I've done, picked out 20 um, albums. Um, if, I, if I was stuck in the 1990s, God, there would be no, no internet, nothing. You know, five, four or five channels on, on British television, that kind of stuff. So... Yeah, there'd be a lot more time, wouldn't there, to, to listen to records and um, be a student and <laughs> do nothing, I would have thought. Um, yeah, so here they are. I've seen a lot of good responses. I've seen uh, Dale, Dale's response, and um, yeah, a lot of um, really good responses. So I tried to do like 20 albums that people hadn't shown, but there's bound to be some um, um, crossovers. So without further ado, in no particular order... Here we go. Right. First album is a uh, porcupine tree. It's called uh, Up the Downstair. It's from 1993. 1993. Around this time I saw them in a in a pub in an upper room in a small provincial uh, Buckinghamshire town and um kind of liked them and uh, it's on Delirium Records which was um um very local label um yeah. This is this is I suppose it's quite LSD influenced and uh, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Next, okay, probably my favourite band, the Church, Australian, although um, mostly born in the UK. Uh, Priest equals Aura was the um, third album they did on BMG, Arista, nineteen ninety two. No, sorry, it was the... No, it was... Oh, I can't remember now, but it was the third or the fourth out. Sorry, it was the third... You had Starfish, Gold Afternoon Fix, then you had this, and then they did Sometime Anywhere, and then got dropped, if they hadn't already been dropped already. That's another album that's worth investigating. This is where they branch out, and I think from this album, it sort of set them up nicely for the next um, couple of decades, really. Um, yeah. Another Australian, this is G.W. Uh, McLennan, been gone now for ooh, about 15 years or so, I think. This is his Watershed album, 1990... 1991? About 1991, I think, anyway. So he was in the go-betweens and um, sadly no longer with us. This is sort of a, a country-tinged album, I would say. Um, yeah, I think I've only got one other album of his on CD, but this would be... Uh, Good. A bit of a show off here, but you know, haven't really got many triple albums to um, show. So this is uh, Smashing Pumpkins, and uh, unfortunately, I ripped it in the corner down there accidentally. So it's not worth near as much as it probably would be. Very expansive, stretching out triple album. Uh, Lenny Kravitz, Mama Said, someone else. The first album a lot of people were really into. I think that was 89. I'm not sure, but this is from 1991. Lots of hits on here. But I think this is a really solid album. All the tracks. Um, or pretty much, you know, all the tracks. Yeah, it's a bit old. A bit of an old hippie, I suppose. But um, yeah, I don't think he ever really touched this again. Uh, Uncle Tupelo, two single albums put together, so maybe a bit of a cheat, but um, never mind. Right, this is an album that I originally did not like when I was more st in straight and in straight music. This is from uh, 1990. Yep, Flood, they might be giants. I bought this and it skipped a bit. I'm not sure if this is my original copy, I can't remember, but... Um, I tried taking it back to the shop, and um, they weren't having any of it. I think I think even I sent my mum with it or something to try and get the money back or whatever. And um, I think they even like played it to prove that it wouldn't skip. Must have been our 
JVC general hi-fi needle that didn't like it anyway. Um, Flood, another album with lots of great tiny little songs as well as their one or two hits that they managed. Um, yeah, completely out there I guess. Nineteen ninety three, John Spencer Blues Explosion. Debut album, I think. Yeah. Nineteen ninety one, they're all early nineties at the moment. KLF White Room. I did sort of think about putting um um Chill Out in there, but I've put that in other lists before, so this is a just a great album. And then they did a film, didn't they? And it didn't, it didn't come out, and that was sort of, yeah. And then they burnt some money, and uh, yeah. Used to have more Julian Cope. This is all I've got now. Piggy Suicide double album. Seems I seem to have been a bit of an old hippie in the nineties. Uh, although maybe not. So this is Manic Street Preachers, the Holy Bible. I like all of the first three, four, five sort of albums by them. I don't know whether I need to cover that up as, as it's nudity or not, but um, too late now anyway. So, um, yeah. Beastie Boys, Check Your Head, that was their third album, I think, double album. Primal Scream, Screamadelica. <laughs> this next one's a bit controversial. Some band called Oasis, shunned now. So I dare say nobody else would show this anymore. Um, yeah, well, not bad, is it? It's got Columbia on it, this one as well. Only available on vinyl um, track. Never saw them live. Um, but worthy, worthy of uh, placing my top 20. Now, he's in Spiral Carpets from Oldham, and this is their debut album, a band who I did see live and were amazing live band to jump up and down to. Uh, this is uh, called Life, isn't it? Yeah, Life is from uh, 1990, just squeezing into the 90s there. There they all are, being projected into the... Uh, into the universe. Had a couple of hits. Yeah, great. A few more to go. Hang on in there. The Green Orbital album. Uh, a band who you might not have heard of. Certainly in the UK. This is Concrete Blonde. This is called Walking in London. It's a bit... She looks a bit goth, I guess. But it's sort of rock. This is the singer, Johnette Napalito or Napalianto or something like that anyway. Uh, IRS 1992. Yeah, it's, it's, it's rock, I suppose. Solid. Um, rock, I don't know how to explain it really. <laughs> When you like a band so much that, that yeah, you sort of forget what they sound like, really. Maybe this is a bit of a surprise as well. Uh, you used to have to cover this up. I, I, I can't show the back because it's got some toe-sucking. This is Madonna Erotica. And I went back to this and I thought, this is a really good album. Um, yeah, she covers quite a lot on here. Towards the end of it, she goes a bit jazzy, a bit rappy. There's a lot of hits on it, a lot of really good singles she did, Rain... Um, deeper and Deeper, Erotica, um, yeah, this is a really good, it's, a, it's on a double final, but this is a really good album, so this was after, um, this was after Like a Prayer, wasn't it, and then before Bedtime Stories, 1990, 1992, yeah, so after this she sort of wavered her success, I don't know, I don't know, she sort of, um, yeah, of course she recovered. She did like Ray of Light and um, the other big one that I haven't got on record called uh, the one with Caught Up. 
hung up on it. Anyway, I'm going to do a Madonna video um, sometime. I need to find her last four CDs on um, on CD cheap. Listen to them and then add it to the rest of my uh, Madonna stuff. And two more to go. Maybe another surprise. I put in Enya Shepherd Moons. 91? Yeah, 91. And last but not least, a I did think about Pulp Fiction, but this is about 90s culture and uh, not all the tracks are 90s, but um, some of them are. Train Spotting. So that's my top 20. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, and thanks for watching.